Um, okay, hello everyone, I'm Michael, and today my topic is large language model powered agents. Okay, I'll wait for uh, you guys to sit. Yeah, so again, uh, I'm Michael, and my topic is large language model powered agents. And uh, I'll start by introducing myself a little bit. Uh, uh, I'll be, I'm a first year CS student at Minerva University, and I just graduated from this pink uniform high school. And this is the avatar I usually use online. And uh, I was born and raised in Shinju, so English is actually not my native uh, language. So if you notice any grammatic errors, just let me know. And you can ask me questions in Chinese, and I'll also be able to answer them. So just, yeah, feel free to ask uh, questions in Chinese. And oh, because uh, I'm going to Minerva, so I'll be headed to San Francisco this fall. And uh, the last thing about me is I'm very excited about the recent development of artificial intelligence. And I'm also very interested in startup. So that's, uh, you can kind of tell why I'm very excited to go into San Francisco since it's like the hub of AI and also startups. All right, so uh, I'll begin with uh, the motivation of this talk. Uh, I was very curious about an uh, open source conference. I've never been to one, and nor did I uh, been one uh, as a lecturer. So that's why I, uh, sign up for the talk. And the reason for uh, my topic, which is large language model powered agents, is because uh, I, uh, just like I said, I'm very excited about the recent development of AI, and it's progressing in a very, very fast speed. Uh, as you can see, on, on the right, there's a chart. Uh, it is showing that the, uh, the history, the star history of a significant open source project and you can see that uh, on the right, there is a red axis that, that almost looks like an axis, but it's actually the, uh, the growth rate of uh, AutoGPT, this open source project. And uh, it, the star grows so fast that it almost looks like a vertical line. And compared to other uh, significant projects uh, we might be familiar with, like PyTorch or Bitcoin, uh, I just think that uh, it must be something special for this. Uh, AutoGPT is a uh, large language model powered agent project. So I, uh, I just think that uh, there, there, there is something special about uh, these type of agents and I wanted to explore them and uh, to share with you guys. And also uh, the last thing about this, uh, as an evidence of how AI is progressing this fast is I, I remember when I picked this uh, topic two months ago, every uh, key opinion leader, like Andre Kaparvi or Yang LeKun on Twitter was talking about agents. But uh, two months later, like now, agent is slowly faded uh, outside, the, out, outside our sight. And this is like an evidence of how fast AI is progressing because every month we will discover a new project or someone uh, published a new research paper, and then uh, people just starting to talk about different things. So I think this is a very exciting time to, uh, to learn and share about AI. Okay, so um, because my topic is large language model powered agent, and I think I should briefly introduce what is a large language model, even though I believe that many of you have already uh, learn or understand what, uh, L what a LLM is. So basically, what a large language model is doing is that uh, given a set of words, or in NLP, we're, we'll call it tokens, uh, we, we split the words into uh, the small tokens, and then we fed these tokens into large language model. And what large LLM is doing is that it will look at all the tokens uh, feed it into it, and then predict the next most probable token. So in this example, 
uh, we're asking the LLM, what is the name of the element with an atomic number of six? And by looking at uh, the, the text we, we, gave, uh, we give them, LLM will uh, produce the most likely response, which is carbon. And by looking at the uh, N minus one token and then predict the, the Nth token. So this is essentially how a LLM, how LLM works. And there is a very uh, famous and uh, effective archi architecture behind LLM. This is, and it is what, why LLM is so powerful. This is the architecture of transformer. And if you're interested in knowing more about how large language model work, I encourage you to uh, look up transformer and by uh, changing the structure of transformer, like for example, the backbone of chat GPT is a GPT generated pre-trained transformer. Uh, it only uses the decoder part of the transformer. And other notable LLMs like BERT, it only uses encoder, or the encoder part of the transformer. So by understanding how transformer works, you'll get a, uh, a much better understanding of how LLM works. But because today's topic is about agents, I'll not be addressing the, the inner details of transformer. But uh, just to uh, let you guys know, you can look up this architecture if you want to know more about it. Uh, okay, so for those of you who just came in, uh, my topic, I'm Michael, and I'm a first year student at Minerva. And my, today I'm going to talk about large language model powered agent. And we just covered a part of large language model. And I think a lot of you may already knew what large language model is, so that's fine. And right now I'm going to talk about uh, the difference between LLM and agent. So basically we're trying to bridge the gap between language and action. And uh, you'll notice that LLM is very powerful. It can do all sorts of, uh, uh, it has a lot of use case like content generation and summarization, translation, classification, and you can, you can also chat with LLM. But this uh, all requires a prompt. So you have to input a prompt into the LLM or a transformer, and then it will generate a response. But so you can see that because LLM requires prompt, uh, it doesn't have agency. But how can we uh, enable a large language model to have agency to help us uh, write email, maybe look up data, and just have its own goal mem and can memorize, memorize things and then accomplish tasks by its own? This is what uh, the agent is trying to solve. So we're trying to bridge the gap between a, a model that can only process text without agency into a agent that can do things by accomplished task by leveraging the power of large language model. Um, so this is the, a very well uh, drawn image by Lillian Wing. I put it in the reference, so if you guys wanted to check out uh, you can see in the reference. And this is the, like, sort of like a general architecture of a agent. So agent is a large, uh, a, a, a system that built up upon large language model, which has its own agency. And there are three uh, very important components of agent. And we'll address in this talk, which is mem memory, planning, and tools. And uh, we'll start with planning. In order to uh, enable agents to have its uh, own goals and then uh, accomplish complex and abstract tasks, you want it to uh, divide a given goals or a task into smaller and manageable tasks so that it can finish it more efficiently and handle more complex scenarios. And uh, just like we're just like humans, uh, for example, if we're cooking, 
uh, we don't just start our action. We will tr uh, first maybe we'll look up a recipe and then we'll prepare our in ingredient. We'll plan before our action. So this is a very in, uh, essential and critical part of what makes Asian so effective at, at uh, accomplishing tasks. And this, this chart is uh, the different techniques that we can use to uh, enable agents to have, to, to split the bigger and more complex goal into smaller and manageable steps. So uh, there are a lot of uh, techniques. One of the famous one is uh, chain of thought, and there's a more recent one, tree of thought. Basically what they're trying to do is, uh, large language model has the power to reason about uh, your given instruction. And for example, for tree of thought, uh, it enumerates a lot of uh, different different ways to approach a same problem, and then it selects the best one that produce the best results. So that uh, in the original one, which does not have any technique, maybe it will produce only one output, and it's like having only one way to solve a task, whereas tree of thought, uh, by breaking down the, the task into more smaller steps, and then uh, choosing the best route to accomplish a goal, it gives the agent the ability to solve a more complex and a more big, big task. And the second thing about planning is combining reasoning and acting. Uh, so, like I said before, a very uh, important, Im important part of the agent is the ability to, to do action in real world scenario. Unlike a uh, large language model, we can only which can only operate in, within text. So uh, this is a very uh, classic framework for how recent agent uh, combines its reasoning ability provided by large language model and the action ability provided by uh, external tools. So on, the, on your right, uh, you can see that in the middle, it's a language model, and then uh, we'll provide it the reasoning trace and then the action and the observation of its action, uh, what, what its action has affect the environment. And this framework is called React, and I think uh, we can better understand this example by looking at, a, looking at its uh, paper. So this is the one image that it, from uh, the React paper. So the question or the task we're trying to accomplish today is to answer this question. Uh, aside from Apple Remote, what other device can control the program Apple Remote was originally designed to interact with? So this question. And in a standard, standard LLM style, it produced the wrong answer. And oh, this is the chain of thought uh, technique. And but and, and, and in the action only style, they also produce the wrong answer because it does not have reasoning. So what React is trying to do, which is on the right side, is combining reasoning and also action. So you can see that, uh, okay. Uh, so the chain of thought is telling the language model. Uh, it's kind of uh, sorry. What lake? Uh, yeah, this is, oh yeah, all of those things today is not my work, it's someone else's work, and uh, yeah, I'm just trying to share what, I, what I've uh, been studying recently, and 
uh, I think most of the on most of the articles I read, uh, we think we regard train of thought as a part of reasoning. But if you think that's not that's a too fishy reasoning, maybe you can look up other techniques. I believe there are other techniques that uh, address reasoning more neatly. And okay, I'll just continue for now. And if you have any other question, you can raise hand. And yeah, we'll, we'll try to uh, solve it. Okay, so back to the React example. You can see that uh, first it has uh, generated uh, a thought. It says that I need to search Apple Remote and find the program it was originally designed to interact with. And then it acts immediately. So combining the action, it search Apple Remote. And then by searching the Apple Remote, it generates a observation from the action. So uh, the Apple Remote is da 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 da. So that is the action from the search action. That is the observation from the search action. And then based on the observation and then the, f and the first action, it generates a second thought. So you can see that by chaining this thoughts and action and observation in sequence, uh, in the final uh, thought four, it thinks uh, it, it gets the model to produce the, uh, the correct answer, which is keyword function keys. Whereas in the standard uh, large language model or reason only and act only style, it all produced uh, wrong, the wrong answer. So this is a very uh, common framework for the agents that use, uh, this is a very common framework for agent to use to, en to enable them to have a more complex thoughts and then to act, act based on the observation. Okay, the next very important component of an agent is, is memory. And there are two types of memory in an agent. The first one is short-term memory, or, or it can be also called in context learning. Uh, if you're familiar with transformer, transformer are trained on a fixed contact length or context window. And of what I mean context window is a transformer can only take in a limited size of token. For example, a uh, sun transformer can only process uh, 512 tokens at a time. So uh, as you can see in this GIF, we input some sequence of tags and then inside the, and then the sequence be being fed into a, a LLMs becomes its memory, but because uh, but become, becomes its short-term memory. But because the large language model has a fixed length of uh, the information it can process, the more you fed after uh, overflowing its memory, it will forget about what, uh, what you said to him. So if, if you've tried using ChatGPT before and you have a lot of conversations with it, you'll sometimes notice that it forgets about the very early conversations you had. And this is because uh, the context window of GPT is limited and you cannot, it cannot remember all of the information you gave it. It, it only remembers the, the most recent uh, details and, uh, and information within its context length. So this is the short term memory for a agent. And there are a and there, and there are long-term memory, which is another type of memory uh, these agents use in, or, in order to, uh, to memorize the information we give them. Because uh, what we want agent, the agent to do is to achieve complex tasks, which often requires uh, breaking down the task into sub-goals, just like we said in the planning. And we will often record these sub-goals each sub goes observation into a vector database, which is the long-term memory of a agent, so that the agent can uh, continue to reevaluate its action and then to uh, retrieve the observation uh, from from its action. And how the how uh, the long-term memory works is that we will. Uh, 
I'll give a concrete example later, but how this works is we will store the, uh, for example, in the last example in the React framework, we have a lot of observations, right? We, we search about what is, what is Google uh, Apple remote, and then we have the results uh, from the search. And then we'll store these all, all types of observation in, in the form of embedding, and then store, store them into vector database. And how we retrieve these embeddings or memories is through a semantic retrieval. And there are a lot of different types of uh, retrieval. A very common way is approximating nearest neighbor or uh, ANN. So basically, uh, because embeddings are just vectors in vector space, and we can retrieve them by comparing their cosine similarity. And that's how we, that's, that's a very uh, st simple method to retrieve these uh, observations or memories of the agent. And there are more complex ways. And if, you, if you're interested, you can search uh, approximate nearest neighbor or maximum inner product to find more about how agent can retrieve its memory based on its uh, current observation. So these are two types of memory for a agent. And then, this, and then this is a, a concrete example for, for us to understand how the memory system of the agent works. Uh, this, is, this is a paper published by Stanford. And I put all my reference in the last page, so if you guys are interested, you can check, check them out. And in this paper, uh, the researcher put 25 uh, LLM. You can think of them as ChatGPT. They put 25 ChatGPT inside a simulated environment, uh, like the game Sim, if you guys have heard of it. So each uh, agent, or what I mean agent is like each ChatGPT they put in a similar simulated environment has its own goals, their identity, their background stories, and their distinctive memories. And then uh, this, the researcher wanted to uh, see how these agents interact uh, in this simulated world when each of the agent has its own intention, their goals, and their memory. So this is a example for the agent Elizabeth Isabella. And this is her memory stream, or, at, or which is the memory system we're talking about right now. And you can see that memory stream is just like a very uh, plain list or a database. It stores uh, all, all of her Isabella's observation of its environment, like uh, the desk is idle or uh, Isabella is stretching. Like th these are just trivial observations. With, uh, with we haven't processed it yet. And then we store all these information into the long-term memory of this agent. And then when Isabelle, Isabelle for, uh, is faced a query, which is uh, what are you looking for to the most right now, Isabella can recall from its uh, long-term memory, which is this huge chunk of text, records every details of it. And then uh, there are three uh, factors we consider. Recency is because we record the time. So the more recent the memory was produced, uh, the recency score will be higher. And then re importance is uh, we ask, uh, because we have 25 chat GPT in, inside the simulated game, right? So we ask uh, each agent to evaluate it, their memories and then give an important score of how important this memory is so for example, if, if she break up with another agent, this memory may, would be a very strong memory. And if she observed the desk is idle, this, this important is uh, clearly a very unimportant memory. So the important score would be lower. And the last one, last factor, recency, is uh, what we were talking about, is the semantic retrieval. So uh, for example, uh, right now we're asking Isabella, what, what, is she, what are something that she's looking forward to? And we will uh, 
translate this sentence into embeddings and then perform a uh, cosine similarity search within the, the large, uh, the long-term memory we just recorded. And then by doing this, we can, uh, we can retrieve the most similar, semantically similar memories and then put them into the context. And so by combining these three factors, we will retrieve a bunch of text and then we'll put this bunch of text into the short-term memory. So remember I said that uh, the agents can process a fixed length of memory at a time. And outside of, outside of that fixed length of memory, we'll put them into long-term memory. And when, whenever we need to use the information within the long-term memory, we'll retrieve them and then we fit, it, fit them into the model. And it can be looked as they just remember a lot of things in their uh, short-term memory. And uh, the third important part, important component of a agent is, is tool use. So by equipping uh, LLMs with external tools, we can significantly extend the model's capability. Uh, for example, if we want, uh, we all know that chat GPT before or any large language model isn't good at uh, doing math problem or physics problem. They're not tr trained to be uh, calculated this type of problem. But we can equip this model with external tools like calculator or Wolfram Alpha. These type of uh, tools are designed to, to make mathematical calculations. And after we get the results from the external tool, we can incorporate the responses back to ChatGPT, and then we can have a more uh, general agent that can solve more, more types of different problems. So in this, in this image, uh, we, ex we augmented the agent's uh, ability to s search online and to uh, make, manage our finance and then to, uh, to control our smart home system. And you can kind of imagine that uh, using the large language model as a core controller and then augmented with external tools, it can achieve a lot more things than just by uh, only having the ability to talk. So uh, I don't know, I know OpenAI recently released the uh, uh, extension for ChatGPT. This is very similar to the tool used at, for, for an agent. So by giving them external tools, they can accomplish different tasks and which will be very helpful for uh, us if we view the agent as a, a personal assistant. And this is a, a concrete example of a agent with tools uh, augmented. So we, we asked ChatGPT, can you describe this, what this picture dictates and how many objects are in the object, uh, are in the picture? And we all know that ChatGPT is a text uh, single modality model, which means that ChatGPT can only process uh, text information. But by com uh, connecting ChatGPT with other models on Hawking Face, which is like a GitHub for machine learning, uh, it can actually have multi-model ability. So in this example, uh, we first use ChatGPT to uh, think about which tools are we going to uh, use to solve this problem. And then after we, we think, we know that which, after ChatGPT decides on which tools it needed to use, it chose ResNet and uh, Vision Transformer for image captioning, which enables it to understand the, the the context of this image. And by doing that and combining the results uh, given by the external tools uh, it called, we can have, the, the, this agent can achieve a multi-modality, uh, can, can accomplish a multi-modality task. And you can see that it performs uh, 
very good on this given task. Uh, before, ChatGPT can only understand ta uh, text, but now by combining its ability with other uh, uh, s specially trained model on vision, it, it now has a more general ability to approach different problems. Okay, the last one is Auto GPT, which is a proof of concept of uh, the three module we just uh, I just shared, and it combines um, all of them. So Auto GPT has internet access to search information. Uh, so this is tool tool use we just said, and then it, al it also has long term and short term memory mem management, which is the memory module. And then for planning, it, Auto GPT uses React, which is the framework framework we just addressed. So this uh, Auto GPT incorporates all of the key impo uh, in components, and it's, so this this project is, is a very uh, popular open source project. Uh, with, this is the one that was the vertical red line in our first first or second slide, and this is because it has a lot of uh, capabilities with a lot, and, and it has all the important components. And this is how uh, all GPT works in a diagram. So when uh, users have a uh, query or give, give them a task, it will put, all GPT will put the task into a task queue. And then it has two different agents within all GPT. One is task prior, prioritization, prioritizing agent, and the, the other is execution agent. So by prioritizing the most, the more important tasks, and then execute them uh, based on the, uh, based on the memory retrieval, it can accomplish very uh, complex, uh, com complex tasks. And we can look it by uh, this demo. So in this demo, uh, Auto GPT is trying to uh, come up with a recipe for an upcoming event, and then as you can see, uh, we're telling it to uh, come up with a unique, original recipe that would suit to a given event, and then it started to generate its own goals. For example, invent an original and out of box recipe. And then it has its internal thoughts and reasoning, just like React, the framework we just said. And then it has actions, the search, because it has uh, on, uh, the ability to search online. And then it also will observe the, uh, it, it also will look at the, the search results, and it, it, is, it is its observation. And by looking at the observation, it can generate next thoughts and next actions. And, and so by chaining these all different components, uh, you'll see at the end, it come, comes up with a very good result. This is the final result of the of agent uh, auto GPD. As you can see, uh, it comes up with a pretty unique uh, recipe for a uh, unique festival, Earth Day. And by looking at the recipe detailly, I think it suits the festival very well. And this is like a very good example to illustrate what agent is different from large language model because it, it does actions and it searched it searched online and then it will reflect on the memories and also its observation to refine its next movement. So auto GPT is a very that's why auto GPT is a very popular uh, agent.
uh, but uh, there are still many limitations for these type of autonomous agent or large language powered large language model powered agent. The first one is error accumulation, uh, because uh, just like uh, someone just asked about the reasoning process too fishy, that that's is that is a very uh, important problem in for these type of agents because the reasoning process is all the same. So once it has an error, it would try to re recursively solve that error, but because the reasoning process is always very similar, so a, a lot of times it cannot like think outside the box or spot what is the core of the problem and just uh, get into the same problem every time. And, and what is worse is that because we chain a lot of different actions and observations together, the error would uh, accumulate uh, exponentially uh, as the actions and observations move on. So it's very hard to guide the agents uh, towards our ultimate goal. And the second uh, thing is exploration efficiency. So for these type of agents, every time it has a, it faces a problem or every time it look at a task, it will try to solve it from scratch. But we all know that a human approaches problem differently. We will first uh, identify the base case and then by combining our past experience, uh, because we, we already learned a lot of skills, we can solve the simple step by doing the same thing. But for these type of agents, every time it's, it sees the problem as a new problem and it will trying to solve it from, from the start, it doesn't utilize, it doesn't have a, a strong, it doesn't consolidate what it learns. And so it will have to uh, devise a new plan and then execute it and see its outcome and then try another one. It does not remember what is the successful step it took to accomplish a task. So it always, uh, it's always a waste of time and tokens f uh, for these type of agents to, to accomplish a complex task. And the third problem is that a lot of times we give the agents open-ended goals, like uh, maybe like search five the most important uh, AI news for this week. And these type of questions, uh, it's hard to verify and it's hard to evaluate the outcomes of an agent. So we have very few data sets that is trained on uh, these type of open-ended question, which makes uh, building a, uh, a LLM powered agent a lot harder. And the f final problem is the, uh, it cannot decompose a problem very in, uh, adequately. So uh, if we give it a very complex or a big problem or goals, some, sometimes it cannot uh, s split the goals into the sub goals that are smaller enough, which it can uh, finish them very efficiently. And that's why it got stuck into uh, different stages within its action because uh, the, the agent just don't have the ability to decompose the text uh, effectively. So uh, after hearing this, maybe we can think about how open source community can help push the frontier of how these agents, uh, how can we improve these problems. And because many of the agents' uh, projects are open source and uh, you can push some su suggestions for these projects. And uh, for that thing, I want to share is, uh, I think if, if you know how to call, maybe all of us could start building our own personal AI assistant. So for example, uh, I, I have a habit to jot down, oh, okay. I have a, I have a habit to jot down my notes uh, on my messenger. I'll send it to myself and like, I'll uh, record some thoughts, journal on, journal on my, uh, my own account. And I just, I think this is a very good example. So if we can build a, a messenger bot that will organize these thoughts for us, and then uh, for example, if we meet someone new, we can just type it down and then they'll search up for, for us and then put it into our 
personal knowledge management kit, or it will read the articles we wanted to read and retrieve those articles when we ask questions to the agents. It will be very helpful for us to have these kind of AI assistants. So uh, I think we can try all try to build our own personal assistants. And yeah, these are the references. And uh, if you want to check them out, you can take a picture. And that's all for my talk. Thank you.